If you've been a DJ for at least the past five years or so, you've most likely seen or heard of the ADJ Warlock. It was a really popular centerpiece barrel scanner light with a unique effect that DJs really loved. Unfortunately, it was discontinued, but now one of ADJ's sister companies, Eliminator Lighting, has come out with, in my mind, what is the successor to that light. And I'll go as far as to say that if you had to choose only one effect light for your light show, this is probably the one to choose. This is the Eliminator Vortex, and in this video, I'm gonna give you an up-close look at the light, talk about all the important specs and features, walk you through how to use this, what they got right, what I think could be improved in a future version, and of course, I'll give you a demo of the light in action. Now, if you're new here, my name is Jordan. This is the Phase Reviews YouTube channel. If you're a subscriber, welcome back as always. Before I crack open this box, make sure that you like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss any future reviews that I've got coming down the pipeline. But enough about that, let's take a look at the Eliminator Lighting Vortex. Right off the bat, you're gonna see on the box that the Eliminator Vortex inherits a lot of the design cues from the previous ADJ Warlock, including this unique shape. But in my mind, the big upgrade and the most important thing to know is that the Vortex now has an 80 watt LED diode inside. The Warlock used to have a discharge lamp. It required more power, it ran hotter, and of course you would have to replace it eventually. With the Vortex LED diode, you're gonna get more efficiency. Uh, you're gonna get a really bright output still, and you're hopefully not gonna ever have to replace the diode itself. Now we'll talk about other changes changes and features in the light, but let's crack it open. You're gonna see from the box size here, the first thing that struck me with this lot, uh, light is the how big it was. The footprint is so much smaller than I initially expected. Um, you know, for being a centerpiece light, uh, this is actually quite compact, and there's a ton more foam in here than the actual light itself, so it's even smaller than what it looks like from the box. Now, inside the packaging, you're going to get your user manual here. It's very comprehensive and runs you through all the features that you need to know. It's uh, Eliminator, it's an ADJ company. It's great, good, comprehensible English, so we like to see that always. You're also gonna get your power cable, and you're gonna see one of my favorite things right off the bat. This is a power con, locking power for the light. Not gonna get yanked out at your gig. That should just be standard nowadays, and the fact that Eliminator's including it on a light at this price point is great. This comes super well packaged. Pull out your foam right here, and we've got the light itself underneath. Now, I'm gonna turn this around and pull it out of the box so that you can see. Um, you can see how much foam you have right there. If you want to transport it in this box, you totally could um, because it's very, very well protected. Pulling off this outer plastic, you're going to see that you also have a piece of foam surrounding the barrel. And these mirrors are probably the most sensitive aspect of these lights. As with any scanner, I think that's one of the downsides to scanner and why they kind of lost out on popularity. They're a little more fragile. Um, and so I would keep this no matter what you store the light in just to protect uh, the barrel from any damage while you move it. There's also a little piece of foam back behind the barrel right there. Now you can see the light. Again, look how small and pretty lightweight. You've got a plastic case here, which I think with the motor and the diode and just uh, this light in general kind of cuts down on the weight. If this was a metal case, it would probably be a lot uh, heftier. Um, and it's plenty robust, you know. Eliminator's got this down to a science. You can see the barrel right here. This has a huge pan um, to the, the motor, and then the barrel has continuous rotation in either direction. One of the huge benefits of the Vortex and lights like this is that the coverage is massive. Like I said, if you needed one effect light for your light show, this could be it because it covers much more than, I would say, 100 degrees. It's gonna spread across all walls, ceiling, and floor of your venue, which you'll see in just a moment. Now, this is the front side of the light. Around the back, we've got our adjustments, our ins and our outs, DMX uh, in and out, and then we've also got our power con connection. What you'll see noticeably missing from this is a power output for daisy chaining. I think they just didn't have enough space here. Could they have put it on this side? I don't know. Uh, power output, power linking is always handy, but not a necessary requirement. But that's really my only gripe with the ins and the outs. We've got a three pin DMX if you want to program this light. In the center is another fantastic upgrade. This is ADJ's uh, new style of display. Gone are the red kind of simple numbered screens with only four digits. This is a full text display. You'll be able to read all of your different settings right on there. And you've got four touch sensitive buttons which are pretty standard around the screen itself. So much easier to navigate and know what thing you're on. You don't have to like decipher four weird letters. Uh, you get full text readout right there. Below the display is your manual focus. You just twist this knob to the left to loosen it and then you can slide, I don't know if I can get my hand in there. You slide that up and down 
to focus it. So aim it at a wall at the venue that you're at, find where the gobos are most in focus, and then just tighten it down. You've got a safety cable loop right here, and then the bracket, which is the last thing I really wanted to talk about as far as the design of the light. I really like these tightening knobs on the bracket. They're much bigger than what I'm used to as far as Eliminator and most other lights, and when you put the clamp in the position you want, these things tighten it down and it is stuck there. You don't have the slipping at all, and it doesn't take a ton of force to turn turn these like this once I get these tight like this thing is not going anywhere like it's gonna stay right there super super great tightening knobs and the clamp is quite big and that's because if you wanted to mount this on a tripod vertically like that and go up through the hole on the bottom this gives you the clearance so that you're not hitting the back of the light okay really really thoughtful design love to see it and uh, like I said these tighten so well it doesn't matter if you mount it like this like this however you want to do it it works great. Now, I will say for my testing, which you'll see in a bit, I like to have the clamp pretty much perpendicular to the light like that. Uh, I found that when this is straight up and down, you get the best coverage in your venue. You get the walls, you get the ceiling, you get the floor. Um, tilting it up or down, you could do it, but I don't think it's necessary. Now, um, as far as other features on the light itself, that's really all of your ins and outs and your connection. So let's kind of talk about a few different specs. Like I mentioned in the intro, this has an 80 watt LED, which is plenty powerful for a lot of applications unless you're doing giant outdoor events this should cover most of your indoor spaces including gyms and also because this is a scanner this has a gobo wheel so instead of your effect light where you're just getting like LED dots from like a moonflower or something this actually has gobos which are small stencils if you don't know that the light passes through to create different shapes it also has a prism so instead of a single gobo pattern that you're seeing on the wall the prism is gonna split this into many I think it's got to be more than 20 I didn't count them all. You'll see it in the video. So every beam that comes out, every image, be it, be it stars or diamonds or whatever, is split into many different beams. So again, adding to the wide coverage of this light. The gobo and the colors are locked on the same wheel. You're going to get 10 different gobos combined with 10 colors. One of them is multicolor. And so you can't adjust those separately. I think for people that are programming this with DMX, they maybe would have liked to see that something probably had to give at the price point so the gobos and the colors are locked together. If you're not going to program this guy, it does have six built-in shows along with sound sensitivity and as you'll see in my testing, I found the sensitivity to be quite good but like any sound sensitive light, you're going to get a lot of really fast kind of quick motion programs. Not my personal favorite. I opt for the manual mode with just automatic speed settings but you can do that if you'd like. So enough chit chat about the light. Let's take a look at it in action. All over some video on top of this so that you can see what it looks like in a room with some haze from the front and the back. The effect is very unique. At its core, the Vortex is taking a beam from an LED diode, shooting it through a prism to split it up, and then onto up to five mirrors at once to split it up even further. The coverage is massively wide, over 100 degrees in one plane, a little bit more narrow in the other, but still, I don't know of many effect lights that can cover as much area as this light. Now, using the manual programs is my favorite. I like to set a moderately slow speed and just let it cycle through this really cool tilting motion, spinning motion. It goes in so many different directions. It will rotate the gobos. It will shake the gobos. It will change the colors. It will change the pattern. It has a lot of good variety. When you turn on sound active mode, depending on how sensitive you set the level, if you've got a ton of bass, this light is just going to go at warp speed. It could be a little nausea inducing, depending on if people are sensitive to the spinning motion. And so for that reason, I choose to keep it off sound active, or if you do have sound active on, to turn it to a very low level. The quality of the optics is fantastic. If you use the focused adjustment, you'll get a nice sharp image. And there's 10, like I said, different gobos that look really great. You've got dots, you've got lines, you've got got stars, all sorts of cool patterns, and apart from the red, all of the other colors are bright enough to light up a small space without even any wash lighting. That's how powerful the 80 watt LED is. Um, from the front with haze, the effect is fantastic. From the back, looking out onto the dance floor, there's just so many beams of light that it looks good as eye candy even without atmosphere. I mentioned that this light is a centerpiece light and it will look great in the middle of a T-bar or the middle of some trussing. It adds something very unique. It doesn't have to really be paired like moving heads, scanners, or wash lighting. But if you wanted a pair of these, one on each end, you would cover a massive amount 
amount of space in your venue. You could obviously use these in multiples, but it's one of the few lights that really stands on its own as a solo fixture. So my final thoughts on the Eliminator Vortex as you can tell from how excited I am, this is an obvious buy for me. One of the highest impact bang for your buck lights you could get. Uh, people are gonna be really happy that the Warlock effect is back, and I love the fact that it's got an LED diode inside, that it's very compact, light, easy to transport. And as I mentioned, if you need one light to do a ton of work, this guy is gonna be the answer. So if you wanna grab one of these for yourself, I'll include a link down in the description. You can go buy through there, support the channel. I would of course love you for it. If you're not picking any of these up, which you'd be crazy not to, but if you aren't, go ahead and like the video, leave a comment, subscribe and ring the notification bell. All of those things help the channel grow and help me keep bringing you content pretty much every week. If you've never been here before, I review anything tech, smart home, projectors, speakers, earbuds, DJ gear, you name it, I've probably tried it. So make sure to stick around. You're not gonna wanna miss what's coming down the pipeline. That's gonna be it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.